Well, we're approaching the middle of the year here. It's, what, just about a week away from the summer solstice 2018. This is the view of the front yard in, what, second end of the second week of June. Still some plants flowering. It's been a really, what well, was really dry May, virtually no rain. And then uh, just last weekend we got just over an inch of rain here, so that was some nice respite before presumably the usual summer drought sets in. So I'll walk over to the park strip here. The um, tufted hair grass, <laughs> a wetland plant around here is in full bloom here. And uh, the marguerites, that's about the only non-native plant I have here. The daisies, oxide daisies, are in bloom here in the park strip. And uh, California poppies are mostly done. They're an annual that's, well, they have their seed pods there. They'll be setting seed and then coming up again next fall with their first fall rains. The view from the bench here, out front, so uh, the checker mallow is finished, the, well they were spikes of pink flowers over there, the um, uh, small yellow flowers and the, well down there is Oregon sunshine still and then the others are what are called slender sink foil, there's some more oxide daisies, foxgloves still in bloom. We'll walk up to the front porch now. Well, last time, this, these tubs still had their winter plantings in. Now it's uh, begonia time <laughs> until next uh, October. These are fibrous rooted begonias here by the front door. Things, the candy flower that was knee deep here and lush a month ago is now dying back. It's another annual like the um, uh, California poppy that uh, blooms, has a long bloom period in spring and then uh, sets seed and goes, well, dries up. got a patch here where there's some unwanted plants I want to get rid of so I've just covered it with landscape fabric for the um, for the season here and then here are the two uh, Oregon ash trees that uh, were just temporary residents here that I've girdled to kill them because they were getting big enough to um, shade my vegetable garden here so I'll plant something new there after those are dead. First nasturtium is blooming here along the walkway here on the south side of the house. And my fabulous tater towers here, <laughs> potatoes I'm growing in tubs and uh, easy to harvest that way. Lots more. I'm a big potato eater so there's potatoes everywhere here. <laughs> Uh, the Marion berries aren't ripe yet, but they'll probably be finished by the time I do this little video in July. Just a view of this part of the garden here. This is, uh, what, the third planting of buttercrunch lettuce. And over here on the, uh, the trellises, the tomatoes are looking great. <laughs> So I have four different tomato plants here, which will reach the top of these trellises, well, <laughs> in a few weeks' time. So who knows, I might have red tomatoes by the 4th of July this year. And then here are my cucumbers, my European-style cucumbers that I grow up rather than out across the ground. And this is a different kind of begonia, um, but grows well here in, in the shade of the, the grape arbor on the east side of the house. The um, 
Bolivian, uh, Begonia boliviense, the uh, Santa Cruz begonias here that are in the hanging baskets. They're not drooped over yet, but they will be by next uh, next month. And then just a, a view out through here, of course, foxglove still in bloom, the purple, lots of marguerites. Uh, the bright yellow is, is a kind of uh, so-called evening primrose, common name as sundrops, intense, intense yellow. I've put little <laughs> Uh, condoms around my, I guess, whatever you call it, around my nectarines here. I've had problems with squirrels eating the nectarines, and so I can't tolerate that. So each, uh, there's a little nectarine inside there, and each one's covered with this little mesh, mesh and then held, held with a clothespin. So I will have nectarines this year, and squirrels too. Um, just the bird bath here, some late California poppies. The young uh, Gravenstein tree here with its little apples on. They're still a month or so away from ripening. Here's my new planting of uh, Belgian endive on the left and uh, winter beets on the right. Just a view then again of uh, mostly oxide daisies, uh, some slender sink foil little yellow flowers and then the big yellow flowers are the sun drops I mentioned a minute ago. Check this out. Is that an impressive head of broccoli? <laughs> it's been a great year so far for broccoli. No aphids, huge heads. This is my little nursery bed here with uh, wild Bel Belgian endive there, leeks, uh, buttercrunch lettuce, and then these are the winter beets here. A lot of these seedlings I probably won't use but um, better to have too many than too few. And as usual, we say hello to the girls here in their outside pen. Good morning, girls. How are you doing? Floppy, flighty, everybody. And the uh, thornless blackberries. Uh, almost finished flowering here. Looking forward to harvesting those in a month or two. <laughs> And just some new, I guess this is my third planting here of um, broccoli uh, on the left or up above there and then cabbage close by. And these are the, this is the first planting of cabbage which, well I've harvested one, I need to harvest five more here very soon. I've had trouble again this year with squirrels and the strawberries, so this netting's up here. They got most of the strawberries before they were even ripe, but you can see there's some ripening now that if all goes well and the squirrels don't eat through the mesh, I'll have strawberries. Just a close-up here of the sun drops. Just, I mean, there's not many yellows that are this bright. And it's a overcast morning, that's when I choose to do these videos here, and so the sun's just kind of breaking through the, the clouds right now. But, so it's bright, but yet I don't have the contrast of um, light and shadow that I'd have um, if it were fully sunny. So this is best for, for photos. And I guess we'll end up over here this time. So this is my uh, European red currant, um, so the edible currant that I'm going to need to get covered here very soon. They're starting to ripen, but the jays and even the squirrels will be after them soon, so um, I don't have enough currants to, shall we say, share with the Jays. <laughs> so, no. Okay, well, got back around here and look back towards the bird bath and under the apple tree here that I've said before I'm, I'm killing now, the, my snag there, so then look, look back that direction. And I guess we'll just finish up here this time. So this is always a really showy bed in um, in uh, in mid June. So that's it for June fifteenth, twenty eighteen.